This is a video I wanted to make to kind of go along with um, a lot of the Bema FAQ videos um, that we've we've produced. You can you can consider it a chaser uh, a chaser video to so many of the other links that might get sent out or or videos that you might watch. For that, I've now done two batches of these Bema FAQ videos. I did one years ago, um, not years and years ago, but a good. Um, right when I moved, so it would have been 2020, end of 2020, early 21, I did a batch of videos, and then we kind of let things sit. A couple years later, we did another batch of videos about some of the continued frequently asked questions that came in. And it was during this recent batch when I was like, man, doing these videos is one of the most uncomfortable, um, uh, particularly because of the content. I mean, there were questions about Satan and questions about heaven and hell and questions about, do I have to believe this? And if I don't, I'm not saved. And um, the nature of the content of those discussions, I was just so uncomfortable doing those videos. And I actually wanted to make a video about questions and kind of reflect on why I was so uncomfortable making those response videos. And I don't, I don't even, I don't even really say anything in those response videos. Um, that's the whole reason they're frequently asked questions is because we don't give answers to a lot of those things. I, and I speak to some of that angst in some of those videos, so so you may hear some things even repeated at times. But why was that such a, a difficult project for me? Part of it is because, um, part of it is because I love questions. Like questions are just so central. One of my greatest convictions is that um, we don't, right now at this point in history, we're getting better, but we don't have a lot of places where we honor and incentivize questions, doubt, wrestling in the evangelical world. It's always about apologetics, explanations, proving that we're right, proof texting this, justifying that. Questions are such a beautiful thing, and I never want to take a question and mishandle it because a question is, in so many ways, it's a treasure. It's a it's a it's a it's a gesture, a movement of vulnerability. It's a I never want to be one more Christian voice, leadership voice, squashing curiosity and questions. I want to do the exact opposite. And so on one hand, I'm trying to hold these questions and encourage them and respect them because I know where those questions come from. I've been there. Like, I, I too have had those questions. I've sat in that same tension. It might have been 10, 15, maybe even 20 years ago, but I've been there. I know what that's like. On the flip side, there's the frustration of how we have a Western, a, a, we're just Western thinkers. We have a Western paradigm. We have a Western perspective. We're going to use Western methods to engage in thought, logic, reasoning, philosophy, theology. And part of my angst is theology. Part of my angst is that we've already kind of constructed, like we go to Bible colleges, we go to seminaries, we study catechism, like we're taught the theology. This is the theology. And from that moment on, Western thinkers are going to anchor everything to that theology. We anchor the Bible to our theology. Think about it. When you hear a biblical teaching, your question is not truly about exegesis and whether or not you're checking the sermon, you're checking the message, you're checking the book or the presentation against a theology that you understand and hold. And if it doesn't check out against the theology, on the worst case, we just reject it. And we're not really using the scripture as the measuring stick. We're using the... And so in one of the videos, I talk about how theology becomes the center of gravity. And our questions are only questions. A lot of these questions are only questions because your theological system has told you to make them questions. Not the Bible. The Bible hasn't actually told you to make those questions questions. The Bible's doing something totally. But our the and so we keep, I said in one video, we keep asking the Bible to meet us on our terms. 
And so what we're trying to do in Bema, like literally the work of Bema, what this whole podcast is about, is about kind of doing the opposite of what, of where those questions come from. We're trying to, whether the word deconstruct is helpful or whether it makes you break out in hives, I don't know. But the, the work of deconstruction, we're trying to like pull apart that worldview that makes us ask a certain set of questions so that we can see the questions the Bible is actually asking. And there's a lot of layers to that. One of the layers we talk about right off the bat is Eastern versus Western thought. Almost all of us are Westerners. And yet the Bible comes from an ancient Eastern world, and it's different. So how do we kind of pull apart this world and try to meet the Bible on its inspired authoritative level where it's having a different conversation? But that journey in the podcast takes time. It takes time. It took me time. I didn't just learn this, spend a few weeks, and then I had a whole new set of questions, and I wasn't asking those questions anymore. And I, This took years of kind of wrestling and struggling and dismantling things and then sitting in all this weird, wacky tension that made me super uncomfortable. This is a journey, and it takes... And so in the midst of these, in the midst of these videos, I'm like, I'm wanting to honor and respect the questions. I'm also frustrated by what's causing people to even ask these questions. And the whole time I'm not trying to pass off that frustration to the listener, but then kind of around all of that is the simple fact that this is it. This is the journey. And so I'll keep, I'll keep doing my part of trying to create these resources and holding the line there in the middle. I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to hold the line there in ways that respect your question. Cause I get it. I get it. And I'm also, but I'm also going to, I'm also going to hold the line and say, but I'm not going to answer that question because it's not the question that the Bible's inviting us to ask. And I'm going to try to graciously and compassionately keep shifting the conversation into a new space, pointing in a new direction to say, it's not that those questions are bad questions or that there aren't even answers, but the work that I'm doing is trying to say, but there is another conversation. And frankly, I think it's the better conversation. It's the biblical conversation. It's not the theological conversation. It is a theological conversation, but it's not, it's not defined by that theology. It's not defined by that tradition. It's not defined by that creed. It's defined by pursuing the text in context. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep trying to hold that line. And, and even when I have convictions, I have convictions about heaven and hell. I have personal convictions about Satan. I'll talk about some of those things on the podcast or in those videos, but I'm going to try to just simply share bits and pieces of my convictions in ways that are helpful, in ways that help us that start a conversation. They don't end it. Great biblical leadership and biblical study, great biblical teaching does not end the conversation. It starts the conversation. Great biblical teaching is not does not put the it doesn't proclaim and put a stamp and end the doesn't shut the door it opens the door and so our goal has always been to teach us how to think not to tell you what to think and, and I just wanted to give word to that your questions are beautiful you should ask them I honor them they're these gifts and treasures that you share with the world and with yourself questions are beautiful our theology is can also be beautiful, but has also at times been destructed and destructive and really jacked some things up. That frustrates me because of what it does to you in this middle space. I'll try to sit in this middle space and the team here at Bema to try to hold ground as we go through the journey. And trust me, it, you, 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 if you if you stick with it, if you persevere, you do end up creating for yourself, a different filter, a different paradigm. You end up asking a new set of questions. You really do end up caring less about that thing that you just, you, this is, I'm, I'm stuck here. And unless I get it, unless I get an answer here, I, I'm going to, I'm never going to be able to move on. You actually do move on. And, and that finds a way to settle itself. And, and you might have a conviction. I have convictions today, but they, they won't be the same convictions I have 15 years from now. Because I'll learn new things, I'll grow as a human being, and I won't hold the same convictions that I have today. But conviction is a part of what it means to exist. 
I, 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 can't, I can't live a life that's convictionless. It's, it's impossible. I have to have somewhere to plant my feet, somewhere to lay my head on a pillow at night, somewhere where I can go, this is important to me, and today, right now, this is what I think about that. So those things are, those things are real. But they're also, they're not static, they're dynamic, because we're dynamic. We're on a journey, and we're growing, and things will change. So hang tough, and I will try to speak to those questions that come in all the time and give us something to consider, maybe a way to reframe it, reshape it, and point it in a new direction, and we'll keep doing that. But I just wanted to reflect on, in a video, why was I so uncomfortable doing these FAQ videos? And that reflection I felt like was helpful for me. Uh, hopefully it's helpful for you. But keep watching for more videos. We'll keep speaking to those things as we keep going. We'll talk to you then.